Hello everyone. In this video, we'll discuss the world of information that every researcher must navigate. This video will focus in two parts. First, on the types of sources you will be hunting for, and second, on the search tools you will use to find them. First, let's take a look at those sources of information you'll be hunting for. Now many of us get our information from books, magazines, newspapers, definitely websites, and sometimes the infamous Wikipedia that many of your instructors will not let you use for your research. It's important to keep in mind though that many of these sources do have a more scholarly counterpart. Whether it is a book written by scholars that go in-depth into the topics that they are researching, or professional magazines that will provide perspective from the professionals in a particular field, and also government websites that provide a great deal of statistical information. But there are also a couple sources that you may be less familiar with. First, let's take a look at subject encyclopedias. They are not like Wikipedia or Britannica, which cover most topics at least a little. In contrast, subject encyclopedias provide a great deal of in-depth background information on particular topics. They are written by experts and professionals in that field. And many of them do come in easy to search electronic databases or ebook formats. Next, we'll look at peer reviewed journals. Now, these journals are kind of like magazines, they're published periodically throughout the year, but the contents of them are very different than what you'll find in a regular magazine. These journals publish research studies, reviews of research studies, and other written scholarly and research endeavors. They're written by experts and professionals who have credentials in the field that they're researching, whether those credentials are an MD, a PhD, a JD, and so on. Most scholarly communication officially happens in these journals. This is a way for scholars and researchers to communicate their research findings. And the contents of these journals goes through a peer-reviewed process, hence the term peer-reviewed journals. Each individual article will be reviewed by other experts and professionals in the particular field that it is discussing. Peer-reviewed journals are often referred to as referee journals, and they are a type of scholarly or academic journal. As I said, it's a type of communication that scholars use to present their research, and something that you'll use more and more as you progress in your major studies. As you research, you will come across a wide variety of sources and a large quantity of information. It's very important to evaluate both the content of those sources as well as the context of them. What we want to take a look at as just some of the basic criteria for evaluation is first authority. Who is the author and are they experts in that field? Next, you can look at objectivity. Is there any bias that you can tell in the source or is it fair? Next, we want to look at accuracy. How accurate is the information in comparison to other sources? And has the author bothered to even check their spelling? Next, we may want to look at how relevant the source is to our research. And last, but certainly not least, we want to find out how current is the information. Is it up to date or a little out of date? Now we're going to take a look at the actual search tools we will use to find all of these types of sources. To start our discussion of the different search tools that you now have access to, we're going to head to the University Library's website. I'm currently on the university homepage, moreheadstate.edu. We have a nice convenient button right here at the top to head to our library homepage. Now on the library homepage, I want to turn your attention first to our main search box. Right here in the middle of the screen is our main gateway to all of our different search tools. Now the library has two basic types of search tools. First is our library catalogs, and second are the library databases. They're slightly different, but they do play together, and it's important to know when you're in one type of search tool and when you're in another. Now, 
our main search for the library is into our catalog. The library actually has two catalogs. First, we have WorldCat. WorldCat is a catalog that includes all of our library material from journal subscriptions to books to ebooks, videos, CDs, and other types of sources that we have here at the library. It includes all of our material at Moorhead State, but also the contents of libraries throughout the country. So you may actually find your local public libraries items in our WorldCat catalog. In contrast, our classic catalog is a catalog that includes only our material, but the classic catalog can be more useful if you want a little bit more options in how you search our content if you're only looking for our stuff. Now, in the next video, you will find a great deal of information about how to search our library databases. For the rest of this video, we will take a look at what is in our library catalogs. But first, we're going to get started by searching WorldCat on a general topic. After typing in my topic, I'm going to hit search. What we have in front of us is our search results. Now, our catalog is going to tell you some basic information first off about each item. Titles, authors, the type of document that you're looking at. This one, for example, is an ebook. And it's going to tell you which library owns it. You'll notice in green right here we have Moorhead State University Camden Carroll Library, which means this is an item we do have. First, let's take a look at this ebook record. You notice at the top that the catalog is going to give you all of the basic citation information about this item detailed information about who the publisher is, the author, the title, etc. This is all information you will need if you choose to cite this source in any research assignments that you have. Now, our particular record, after it tells you the basic citation info, it provides a link. Remember, this is an ebook, so if we click here to get full access to the text, we are then connected to a library database. Now I didn't discuss this earlier, but I do want to make the distinction. The library catalog will tell you what items we have access to, but it's in our databases that you will actually find the electronic versions of those items that we have, obviously, electronically. Here is the ebook. If we wanted to click on this link right here, we could get access to this particular ebook. Now, heading back to our catalog, let's take a look at a different result. I'm next going to take a look at a standard book record. First, again, at the top, we have our citation information. I do want to point out that our catalog here does include an option to see examples of citations for this item, but I need to warn you that this particular catalog is infamously incorrect with its citation examples. Next, let's take a look at how we can actually find this item in the library. It's not an ebook, so we have to look in the library to find it. The key information to finding an item in the library is to note the location of the item and the call number. Now, the library has many sub collections, but this particular item is in our main nonfiction collection. So, using this information, I know where to go in the library but I then need a call number. Now a call number is a unique number that every single item in the library should have and this number is a Dewey Decimal number. So if you're familiar with Dewey from your local public library or your high school library then you should be set. These particular call numbers though are arranged by subject which means that similar items that cover the same topics should be right next to each other on the shelf. You need this particular number, though, to find this unique item on that bookshelf. So you use the location to know where to go in the library and the call number to know which shelf when you're in the right area. Now let's take a look at our search results again. Looking at the search results page, you do notice that we have other options in which we can play with our search. Over here on the left, we have the option to narrow things down if we wanted a video or an audiobook as an option. We can weed out all the other types of formats and only search audiobook. Other ways to narrow your search, you can limit by year or by language and many other different facets. It's important to keep in mind though, as you search, 
and handle our catalog that we do have an option to resort our items. As I mentioned earlier, WorldCat includes the items at most of the other libraries in the country. We default our catalog to search first for our library material, but you do have the option to resort your search. And in this case, I'll show what our search results look like when we change it to relevance only. So it'll pick out only the most relevant items. At the top, we have a number of items that come from WorldCat libraries, which means it's some library out there in the world, not Moorhead State. If we take a look at this item, we have here at the top an option to actually find which libraries own it. For this particular book, we see that Eastern Kentucky has it, Marshall University, as well as Bluegrass Community Technical College, and UK. If we wanted this item, we do not actually have to drive to Lexington or to Huntington. We have the option through a library service called Interlibrary Loan to request this item. If we click on this link, we will be directed to the Interlibrary Loan request system. All you need is your MSU ID number and your email password to log in. Do be aware though that this service is completely free and you can request almost anything from us except media like videos and CDs. Now I'm going to return to the library homepage to pinpoint other types of sources that you may need to use in your research. Now it's important to keep in mind that you can always head to the library homepage to find out more information about our services and our different resources that we have available for you. Also take note that here at the top we will include any special information about the library including notices about surveys as well as any times that the library has to close early and that sort of information. To find out more about library services, if you head over here to use our services, you will find a page that will list all the different services we have available for our students. Here you'll find a direct link to Interlibrary Loan. You don't always have to go into our catalog to use this service. You can obviously just click on this link and head directly to it. Another important service to keep in mind for anyone who is an online or off-campus or regional campus student, we have off-campus delivery, which means that if you request any item that our library does own, we will send it to your home for free. Another very important service that the library provides, of course, is research help. Over here on the left again, if you go to Get Help, you will find a list of all the different ways that you can get in contact with us. You can always give us a call, visit us at the Moorhead campus, send us an email, or set up an appointment to meet with a librarian. But many students find it very useful to send us an instant message through our chat widget. You will find our chat box on most of the library web pages, so feel free to always send us your questions. Other key features of the library website include, over here on the right, a list of quick links. At the top we provide links to your library account, where you can find information about the items you have checked out and information about overdue fines. You can also find a list of the different library research guides that we have created to help you guys with your research. Feel free to explore them at your leisure. Now remember, the library is here to help you guys get access to information and to help weed through that information. In our next video, we will start to explore the different library databases that you now have access to as a student here at Moorhead. Remember, if you have questions, please feel free to contact us.